Do these protesters not know that our soldiers see that on TV? I'd like to go over to Vietnam, track down all the boys in the neighborhood, and give them a beer. Because I'm going to Vietnam, and I'm bringing a beer! Zac Efron's character taking up bartender Bill Murray's challenge to make the greatest beer run ever to support the troops from their working-class neighborhood at the height of the Vietnam War in a very divided America. Hey, Chief, no chance you have a ship heading to Vietnam. 1,700 hours. Tonight? It's not going to be easy. But I'm going to show them that this country is still behind them. You're going to get yourself killed over there. What makes the greatest beer run ever even more remarkable is that it really happened. With Chickie Donahue, who lived the life. <laughs> Tom Chickie Donahue, a former Marine from Manhattan's Inwood neighborhood, really did hitchhike and connive his way the length of war-torn Vietnam in 1968 to deliver beers to his hometown buddies serving there as his ultimate support our troops gesture, which they will never forget. <laughs> Chicky, 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 what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Guys, this is my buddy from back home, Chicky Donahue. Hey, Donahue. <laughs> Is this the USO? Chicky Donahue reuniting with the four veterans he delivered beer to in Vietnam, who rarely get together since they all moved out of their old neighborhood over the wow. years. Wow. Yeah. Holy it's 47 years. Ricky had to give up his poncho for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it took more than a half century, Chicky's best-selling book co-authored with reporter J.T. Malloy, and this documentary, sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, before most people outside of his neighborhood ever heard, yet alone believed his story. It began with a little lie he often told the military while navigating the Vietnam War as a civilian. The basic story was I had a stepbrother over there, and he was, that's, that, that could describe the uh, different name, right? And, uh, and our mother died. I promised mom that before she died that I would get over to see Timmy or Frankie or whoever. Did you have an Irish tear in your eye when you I said tried, that? I tried very hard. I was looking for the red-faced people. <laughs> the Irish. <laughs> the Irish. <laughs> My generation, I'm 36, I think most of what we know about Vietnam it comes through what we've seen in films, uh, Apocalypse Now, Platoon, Forrest Gump. Andrew Moscato, the producer of both the documentary and now the dramatic film, believes Chickie Donahue's story of friendship and loyalty might change the conversation about the war between different generations. Our intent going into making this film was to show these soldiers as they were, as just young men from their neighborhoods that were plucked from their homes and sent to the other side of the world. The Vietnam generation never really got the Band of Brothers treatment. The film's parallel story is about how Chickie's original support for the war changes along the way by what he sees and learns firsthand in Vietnam, especially during the 1968 Tet Offensive. Was that your wake-up call that things were not going right and this may be not a winnable war militarily? I was not not making any judgments on a winnable war. I was making a judgment that this war was stupid, screwy. It looked more like a civil war to me. Lian Hang Nguyen, a Columbia University Asian Studies professor and a Vietnam War refugee, was the film's tactical advisor for historical and cultural accuracy. I thought that the, the film did a great job in terms of having this sort of coming-of-age uh, narrative for Chicky, uh, for him to realize that this war uh, wasn't uh, this black-and-white war in the way that, uh, you know, the uh, the, the folks in Inwood, the older generation, were trying to compare it to World War II. As a historian, how do you rate Chickie Donahue? Was he a pretty accurate observer for what was going on over there? I would give Chickie an A+. Plus. And, and try to really carve out a future that was not defined by war. So has but former Secretary of State John Kerry, both as a Vietnam veteran and eventual critic of the war. His recent op-ed about the film says it's long overdue and a rare chance for Vietnam veterans to honor the camaraderie and friendships they experienced but are reluctant to share publicly. I was in India Company, uh, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, uh, in uh, Quang Nam province in Vietnam. Uh, what would have been your reaction if a guy showed up out in the bush near An Hoa in 1969 with some beers for you? How would you have reacted? <laughs> we might have shot him. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that certainly wasn't something we would expect. 
Tom Vallely, now the director of Harvard Kennedy School's Southeast Asia program, was a consultant for Ken Burns' Vietnam documentary series. What I like about the Ken Burns series is that they're very, very good at telling a sad story. And so you, you didn't just go to Vietnam and not laugh, right? You know, there's laughter in Vietnam. Even the war, there's laughter. There's friendship, and, you know, friendship that lasts forever and good times and things you remember fondly. The original bar at the tip of Manhattan where this incredible story of loyalty began more than 50 years ago is long gone. But not the memories of the local boys in this neighborhood who were killed in Vietnam. Their names are memorialized in this church garden. It includes the name of Marine Lieutenant Richard Reynolds Jr. who was killed before Chickie could get him his beer. First of all, th this was uncharted territory for the most part. There weren't a lot of military installations that far north and we were setting up and digging our foxholes and so on and so forth, and then I get a, a message on the radio that I have to come back into the main perimeter. And I walk in, and there's a sergeant down. I said, yes, sir, what's, you know, what's, you called me back in? He said, I didn't call you back in. He said, this guy did. He pops out <laughs> from out of this thing. I say, hey, Ricky, how are you? I, what the hell are you doing here? Chicky Dunny in a mandrake shirt and light denim jeans. They weren't exactly camouflaged. Well, I had to put a poncho on them immediately. Because otherwise, <laughs> like, you know, shoot me, I'm, I'm from New York. <laughs> Chickies and the veterans' families from their old New York neighborhood were treated to a sneak preview by the film's producers. Their three minutes of fame, as they say, after 55 years of privately sharing Chickie Donahue's greatest beer run ever a story of friendship, loyalty, and war. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Mike Saray in New York.